Well, I wanted to bring you a continuation of some circuits that I showed, oh gosh, well over a year and a half ago, where I was using permanent magnets. Oh, and while I think of it, there's a detractor out there who says that Maxwell's equations prevent this from working. Okay, believe what you want to believe. I think you should revisit Maxwell's equations. Okay, what I have here is a Cree board right here, a number of diodes here on the board, a toroid coil, two windings, one on each side of the torus, seven disc magnets on this side, insulated with plastic so it does not touch the coil. This side does touch the coil, but that's fine because it doesn't do anything anyway. So let me go ahead and bring the frequency up on this guy to where he wants to be, and you can see what's happening. So let me go ahead and put, put this in the tripod, and I'll show you a couple of different things about it, which will probably just cause more trouble than it creates, but I'll go ahead and show it anyway. Okay, we'll get it, get a little closer. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'll bring it back into frequency. And we see we have a resonant point. Now this resonant point is determined by two things. The resonance of the disc magnets and the interaction of the disc magnets with the toroid core. As you can tell with all of these magnets in the paper that I've written on it, you can get the part number and I even supply its its parameters in the appendix, but you can assure yourself that this core is saturated. So if I go off frequency, we can see that it just falls out. Now the question is, if I remove a magnet, or move the magnets around, will it make a difference? Are they doing anything at all? Let me go ahead and just, oh, I forgot. <laughs> Here's a 1 ohm resistor, scope probe. I use that to measure the output current, and then I also measure the input with a 1 ohm resistor using the differential factors on the scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this set of magnets right here and see if anything happens. didn't seem like there was any effect at all, except that it might have got brighter. So let me go ahead and put it back to where it would like to live. Let me move the one over here on the other side, which is the feed side. Now I've got the coil misadjusted because the magnetic field, sorry about that, has to go through the torus properly. When I say properly, there's only one way that it works, and you'll notice that this one appears to be in the center of the torus, which is correct, and this one is offset off to one side. Not much, but enough. So we should be able to go back, move it back, and get our signal back. We'll hope. Okay? So all I did was move this set of permanent magnets, which is insulated, it's not touching that torus at all. I just moved them so that the magnetic field is being changed. And there it came back on again. Let me move it further out here. There we go. So by merely adjusting the magnets, you can see that I can make it work or not work. And regardless of what I do here, with the frequency, it's not going to come back. 
So I need to go ahead and put that back in the center. And then we've got our proper frequency available to utilize what's going on here. This is called an SFM. SFM stands for Static Field Modulation. I've written a 20-page paper on it. It's quite detailed, but I'm going back through it at this time, being sure of, of no mistakes and uh, telling you about all the gotchas, because you can see right here that if you have moved those magnets just a eighth of an inch, it'll never work. So I have to say honestly, this has taken me literally months to get this going. While I was recovering from my illness, this is the guy I was working on. So don't let anybody detract you and tell you that you can't do this. I mean, if they're more than willing to come here and look at it, it's doing it. And there's nothing but a signal generator driving one end of seven disc magnets that are insulated from the torus. The seven disc magnets on this side, there's two coils on the torus. They're broke each, each coil. I've tied the two together on the bottom and taken the output out of the top. And that's about it. Uh, I actually think that when we get to where we're doing the current measurements, you might get more excited if, if and when we uh, explain how to get this working for replicators, which I agree is going to be somewhat difficult. But anyway, by that time, maybe I'll have it down and be able to specify exactly what you have to do to make it work. But there again, let me do it one more time. I'll just move, I've got these magnets on this board with a little wire tie. Let me move that guy. See, I just moved it out of the way. So you can tell of all the possible positions you can have two magnets on that coil it's going to take you a while to find the right place. So anyway, that's an SFM, and I hope nobody believes that those quatrains say anything about the fact that this will not work.